Hey guys and welcome to Film Study where we analyze films in various ways to make you see it in a different concept and change a part of a scene and figure out how the rest of the story would play out based on a single change in one scene. Finding Nemo is a great family movie. It brings us through the entire range of human emotion and makes us laugh, cry, scared, excited, hopeful, and it gives us a real sense of adventure. Since the release of Pixar's Finding Nemo in 2003, it easily became one of my personal favorites in the top five. From then to now, there's been so many theories surrounding the story alone, like Nemo not actually existing, Dory lying about her short-term memory loss, even one with the film being about true loss. There have been so many others out there, including this one. This channel asked the question, if a scene was changed or switched, how would it affect the rest of the story? So, what if Marlin was taken instead of Nemo? That's a big question considering Nemo and Marlin's personalities are so different since they have different views of the ocean. Lots of questions surfaced, like how would Marlin interact with the other fish in the dentist's office, how would Nemo interact with Bruce, and if Nemo would even meet Dory. A lot can change here as Marlin is very different even though they are related as father and son. Nemo's views on life differ from Marlin's as Marlin went through a dramatic experience losing his wife and other children. Nemo doesn't know this and probably never will to protect him. His view is he believes his father is neglecting freedom from him and being too protective for no reason. He loves this, but at times when he wants to explore, he gets blocked by him and frustrated, choosing to disobey to prove a point. On top of this, there are several positive and important values in Finding Nemo that make great learning points for children. Today, I plan to answer these questions and walk through the film to find out what would change if Marlon was taken instead and what would he do in order to get out of the situation of being separated from his son. What some of us may forget is he already lost his spouse and many of his children, triggering fear and overprotection. While doing some research for diving deeper into the characters' minds, I came across an essay with a quote, The animators expressed human-like features on fish and did quite well as Nemo showed his anger towards his father for not letting him make his own decisions. Marlin has the face of a disappointed father, angry towards his son for disobeying him. This is directly compared to how children are disobedient towards their peers and Marlin being an overly attached father was somewhat a problem to Nemo. This is very well said and gives the example of overprotectiveness in any relationship and it having a negative effect. He even goes as far as directing Nemo at the entrance of the anemone, warning him of the dangers of anything outside those walls and being overly cautious. For starters, the first few scenes would start off as normal from when we see Marlin and his spouse and kids to Nemo heading to his first day of school. What you can notice instantly is Marlin swears something has to be wrong with Nemo. He isn't a good swimmer, and I just think it's a little too soon for him to be out here unsupervised. You'll never get out of there yourself. I'll, I'll do it. Three. No! See, something's wrong with you! He's got a little fin. I find if he's having trouble swimming, I'll let him take a break. 10, 15 Dad, minutes. Dad, it's time for you to go now. Don't worry. We're gonna stay together as a group. It's never clear as to why he feels this way, but the only reason I could think of is not only his lucky fin, but after the incident with his mother, Nemo was the only egg left and was cracked. Despite this, we can see that Nemo is very capable as we can see throughout the film. At the drop-off, when Marlin meets with some neighbors, Bob says to him, look who's out of the anemone, giving us the notion that he stays hidden for long periods of time. This would be a sign of not only seclusion, but sheltering for Nemo. The more the shelter, the more that person could become curious and more adventurous about the world around them and wonder what's out there, more than the average person. This is the case with Nemo. Turning a bit rebellious, we can see that he is excited when he gets introduced to his teacher, telling his dad, Oh, when you think thoughts that are empirical. Dad, you can go now. Oh, hello, who is this? I'm Nemo. Showing a bit of embarrassment. Marlin even furthering this by explaining to Mr. Ray Nemo's flaws. He tried his hardest to be able to explore on his own without his dad being an obstacle to finding his freedom. Moving on to the moment Nemo gets taken, his curiosity is greater than normal which causes some of his actions. To prove a point to his father, Nemo swims out to open water against his wishes after their argument of him not being capable. So what would the reason Marlin would swim out there in the first place? Well, to get to him. So in that case, when the diver approaches, let's assume Marlin was captured and Nemo was able to swim away. What would Nemo do in this situation? Based on Nemo's personality, 
he would be frightened and stayed with the school of fish and Mr. Ray. Dory was heading this direction, so it would be very possible that she could have ran into Nemo as well. With Nemo being a child and Dory's inability to hold a memory short term, I feel like Mr. Ray would have become a more involved character. Him being a scientist would have been a benefit to finding Marlin. In one example of Marlin's point of view is Dory is seen as unintelligent by him, and him only. He tries to end his partnership with Dory by calling her a delay fish. Dory gets upset and begins to cry. Marlin sues, not wanting the tears to come, but by doing so, Marlin basically uses an abuser's words, saying he is hurting Dory for her own good because he doesn't understand his own emotions. A school of performing fish happen upon the two and make sure Dory is okay. Marlin displaying the behavior of an abuser again by quickly jumping in to say she's fine. We learn in Finding Dory that she was in the middle of looking for her parents when she ran into Marlin, for who knows how long she was swimming in that direction. Mr. Ray being the more mature one here, I feel like he would have formulated a plan. Where they would be at this moment, Bruce wouldn't have been a character as when we see him, it is past the drop off at ground level far from the surface where Marlin was following the boat. So the entire situation with Bruce and Marlin, or in our case, Nemo and Mr. Ray, wouldn't have happened. In realizing the mask, Mr. Ray, being a scientist, could have had connections, per se. So I don't think the mask would be entirely necessary. At the dentist's office, Marlin would have a better sense than most of the fish in there and teamed up with Gil in order to escape. At this point, there are various scenarios that they could have ended up in, like meeting Crush as well. The problem with Marlin is he sees flaws very easily and points them out. Say Gale introduced his plan to Marlin instead, he would have seen the damage on him and insisted he couldn't do certain things. Just like what he does with Nemo and Dory. He has no hope for others who he sees flawed. Dory has a very positive outlook even when on a very scary and important mission. In the case of if Nemo would meet Dory, yes. We can see when Dory meets Nemo for the first time and it is in the middle of a breakdown and not being able to remember who she's looking for, Nemo works with her to accomplish the problem together, something Marlin wouldn't do. In the end, of course Marlin and Nemo would have been reunited with each other, just Nemo would have had to put more effort in on his part I feel. Dory and Nemo would have had a better understanding of each other, thus giving less conflict within the story. A post made by one Bobber Shrek posted an opinion on Reddit saying anyone else thought that in Finding Nemo, it was lazy writing, a coincidence that Marlin randomly came across Dory. If this movie flowed organically, Marlin wouldn't have found a way to find Nemo at all and instead just accept he's gone and move on and cope with his depression. For the purpose of story progression and the theme of it, this wouldn't have made a good flow through of a story. So what do you guys think of this theory? I think with Marlin and Nemo switched, the story would have the same outcome in the end, but with a different lesson and strength coming from the characters. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And for more videos like this, we'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. It would really help out the channel and let us know that we are providing great content for you guys. You think you could do these things, but you just can't, Nemo!